And now it's time for the lightning round with Brad Butt. Brad, are you all set to go? Yeah, let's roll. All right. Finally, we see some capacity limits uh, ending. Is this for restaurants in every place, Brad, or is there still going to be some selection? Well, what we're hearing is the Premier will make an announcement later this week and that capacity limits uh, will be lifted. We're not sure the effective date of that yet, but it looks like uh, we can see the end of the tunnel. And yes, that will be restaurants and fitness centers and others that still face uh, those 50% capacity limits. Hopefully they'll be fully lifted. Brad, uh, many of the provinces have a uh, uh, an app for their uh, vaccination system. Uh, we got a QR code. Uh, can we expect the same thing as the other provinces? Or is this the best we're going to have? This is the program. Uh, the QR codes were launched over the weekend. People could download them. And now uh, restaurants uh, and fitness centers and other places will be able to uh, uh, use the Verify Ontario uh, screening system to screen your, um, your QR code if you've downloaded it on your phone like I have. So you should be able to go in. It should be seamless and straightforward once those businesses are ready to scan under the Verify Ontario program. Brad, uh, the uh, federal subsidy program is set to expire on October 23rd, but the Fed and the federal uh, government can extend it to a uh, to I believe it's November 20th, but they don't come back until November 22nd. So what does that mean for federal subsidy programs? Yeah, there's a lot of businesses very worried about the Canada emergency wage subsidy and the Canada emergency rent subsidy programs that were extended because of the election till October 23rd, which is this Saturday, they would expire. Yes, cabinet can extend till the 20th of November, but they really will need new legislation passed to extend it beyond that. Having the house go back on November 22nd isn't gonna be very helpful for those businesses that really rely on those programs. Brad, the uh, federal government and the prime minister are looking at reducing the number of days that uh, they are sitting in Parliament. Um, what's the strategy behind this? Why is he considering this? Well, obviously, this calendar year has been a, a, a uh, the shortest probably number of sitting days um, that we've had in a long time. But of course, we had a federal election in there. And obviously, the House uh, doesn't sit uh, during that time. Um, What's the strategy? Well, the government never wants the House to sit. They, <laughs> they don't want to be criticized. I mean, they, they don't want to be held accountable. I mean, it's you know, it doesn't matter who the government is. That's the way it is. And I suspect they're trying to find ways to have the House sit less. Brad, there's a, a, a move afoot to change the way we elect the regional chair. Uh, there was a motion brought by Councillor Parrish at the Regional Council uh, last week. What's the fallout from this? Well, a majority of members of Peel Regional Council have voted to uh, take out to a public meeting this idea that the, the new regional chair after the next municipal election will be selected among the 24 elected members of regional council and one of them would become chair and would do that role on a part-time basis rather than the full-time chair of the region that we've seen since 1974 when the region was created. So there'll be a public meeting. I'm sure MBOT will be involved and others, and we'll see what winds up happening at the end. Lots more to come on that news for sure. That's it for the lightning round. Brad, we'll see you next week. Thanks, David.